Okay, we're going to talk a little bit about how to make a kind of what was going to work as a team mailbox in Google Admin Workspaces. Now, this is way different than what we do here for um, Outlook. So if you're used to Outlook, you're used to Teams, you're used to the shared email box, the collaborative email box, this system doesn't exactly do that as part of what we normally see as, a, as an email box, right? So usually when you're looking at an email box, you would see stuff and you don't really see groups over here. If you're gonna do groups, you kinda need to dig on over to here and then go over to groups, right? And that will take you to where you wanna go and what we'll do is to take you to all the groups that you are a member of as part of the process. So these are all the groups for the company that we've got. Some are internal, um, some are not internal, some are external, but what we need to do here is we need to go to here and then we need to go to groups And we go directory groups and we want to make sure what we've got and that will take you to all the groups that you've got um, you can also go to apps um, Google workspace and go into groups for business just need to make sure you need to have this thing on right so there's two ways of getting to it the big thing that you want to do is you want to check the share settings and because we've already got groups up I've kind of got this set up for me and how we want to do so accessing groups from outside this organization this is the global option this is where you start off with everything and this is for the whole company and how the whole company works so you can actually go public on the internet anyone on the internet can use search for and post to groups um, if I was again remember this is global this is for everybody generally no that's not what I want to do so private no one outside your organization can view or search or otherwise now that doesn't mean that Google can't access it because they're gonna do that anyways because it's data but private um, that's external users can email the group if the group setting allows that's the big one that is the important part um, I do want anyone in the organization to create groups because I don't want to put a burden on my administrators right so anyone in the organization can create groups and I kind of want to leave it at that I don't want anyone on the internet to create a group for the company that would be kind of crazy and then I don't want organizational admins because I don't want to overload them groups are going to kind of come and go especially around projects or around other things like that. Group owners can allow external members. Organizational admins can always add external members. So group owners can add external members. I would kind of leave that one straight up. You don't really need to have a member, a person that can scan the whole email box where you can allow email from outside the organization. So for me, when you're setting this up globally, right, you said the group owners can allow incoming email from outside the organization. And that's what you get. You're pretty much so good to go on that one. Who can view the conversations? All organizational users. We can tie that down per the group as we kind of dig through this. So I'm just going to go ahead and leave that. I'm definitely not going to let anyone on the internet view anything that's going on here. Um, but for default, for global, that will work. I'm not going to hide anything. And we go from there. So when you're in Google Workspaces, that's exactly how you want to set this up. Just to get started from the global viewpoint, when you get into the group itself, you can make more of a fine grained process around that. So now these are all the groups that I have for this. Um, everything is kind of tied around here as the owner and administrator for all the groups that we've created for the group that we've got. So if we have a help desk, and this is one of the ones that we kind of can set up on this one, you can go and when you set this up, you create a new group or you set all the rest of it up, we're gonna kind of walk through some permissions here. So we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna create a group and we're just gonna call it testing, right? And it will have an email, it will have a group email and that's the important part, we can actually do this and test group delete after, after testing is done. And again, this is the cool part about it, it can be really kind of temporary like that, but it does give you an email, which is kind of fun to go ahead and play around with. Now, the neat part is that this is where you get more into the fine grained access of the whole thing, right? So you can do only invited users. So if I'm actually really doing a testing thing, if I'm testing some software or something else like this, I can just invite users from the QA group, from the security group, from the development group, just for that, including the project manager. We can start using this as a really way, easy way just to email status updates, where we are, test reports, and anything else, the whole kind of big box for all that data 
that a project will generate. You can do it this way so we don't clog up our email addresses with our regular work ones with a whole bunch of project stuff. But we can just have people email the project directly and then everyone can dig through the data. So those invited users actually works. Um, anyone in the organization can ask to join. That actually makes sense because then that tan takes the burden off of um, the administrator and puts it right on the group owner to kind of approve someone to come in or just let anyone in the organization join. Depends on how you go, right? Depends on what your project needs. So you can set it up. Who can view the conversations, right? Group members or anyone in the organization. Who can post to this? Now, the way we've got it set up is that anyone on the internet can post. So they can send me an email and it will show up in the group and everything will work. This is great for sales, for help desk, but if it's an internal project, you may just want to leave it at the organization so who can email this team and, and then we can assign and delegate everything along the way and then who can view members on um, the entire organization that just kind of makes sense so i'm thinking of an internal project team here so we're just going to leave this as the entire organization and then we can just go ahead and add members i'm not going to do any of that but we can do group managers so we can have other managers in here we can put a welcome message and we can directly add members to the group as we kind of go subscription via email and then that kind of just creates the group and play. Now we got that, so we go to the group. And what ends up happening is you're going to end up with group settings over here. So that group settings kind of walks you through how everything is done here. And what you want to do is you want to turn that into a collaborative email box. Collaborative inbox is really kind of the important part of this because that allows you to set up the idea that people can come in and then do that whole email feel like we learned in Outlook for like the last 30 years, however long Outlook's been around. Um, I do want enable shared labels for the group because labels are always good. That's really nice metadata to have to kind of play around with it. People can put labels in and all the rest of it. You just have to make sure the labels are clean. So like no one is like flagging a customer email saying horrible customer to work with. We don't want that kind of thing. That's gonna be an internal policy process. And then finally, organizational members who can see the group, who can actually see it. Always, if it's business related, you kind of want to leave it so that only organizational members can do it and who can join the group. Only people with that domain email can join the group. You really can't bring other people in. You don't need to. If you're running a help desk, all you really need to do is change who can post over to anyone on the Internet and just say, hey, just email this address and you're in pretty good shape. And we'll kind of show you what that looks like for the sales and the help desk one. Uh, member moderation. Group managers can moderate. And that's kind of important too because you don't want to have messages being buried. Um, group managers work well because usually they're also the group owners. You can create some custom roles if you want. Member privacy, either display name or organizational profile. Who can contract group owners? A, anyone on, inside the company can. And then you can view member email addresses. That's kind of important too in case you're doing something else um, or you've got a project working on. I do like having people able to just know who all is a member of a group. That can be kind of interesting. It can also be kind of nice if people are coming and going from the team. Allow email posting, absolutely. And allow web posting. So allow users to post to the group on the web. So if you have like a form, this works great for sales, this works great for help desk. If you have a form where you want to regulate the information that someone can put in there, instead of just a free form email, that's a terabit in size or however big, right? Allow web posting kind of works, especially if you have a form or something else. So I'm okay with these two posting policies. Mostly though, you're gonna see a lot of people emailing you. And then conversation history. The thing is who can reply privately to authors? And so all of the group members can have an internal side channel. Now the cool part, and this is the thing, I don't think people quite get it, that all of this data is recorded. So if you're doing reply privately to authors, you can group members will work, who can attach files, group members, don't do anyone on the web for attach files, unless it's help desk and you ask for screen caps. But remember, if you do something like that, you've kind of got to remember how much space you're going to be taking up with what people will be sending you. Some of the people will actually send you a video, <laughs> right, as big as they can send for this whole thing. So who can attach files? Um, just the group members for right now. For this one, for what we're doing, because we're taking a look at it as a project, just kind of leave it all internal to the group. Who can moderate, post as the group, post as the group, group managers, and who can post or moderate metadata. Default sender, I want it to be the group address, right? That way it comes right back to this and we know who did what. 
right? Group moderation, message moderation. If you do need to moderate, um, we can moderate messages from non-members, non moderate all messages or no moderation. Because I'm setting this up as an internal team project, I'm just gonna leave it as no moderation. New member restrictions, we're not too worried about this. You can do no posting restriction for new members or new member posts are moderated or new members cannot post. Again, I'm seeing this as an internal project file folder, so that will work. Um, no reject message, we're not gonna have any of that. Um, email options, you can actually put in a prefix if you want, so you could put the project name in here. So project name, right? And that will be the project. You can actually do this if you're doing private emails back and forth. Include the standard groups footer, but you can also do a private one. So if you have one for this particular group, you can do that. Default language. Um, Auto replies, post replies to sender chooses recipient. I usually do um, all group members, right? Post replies to the group posts, just in case someone needs to have them, but that can also get to be kind of horrible. Um, so we can actually do um, a custom address, and that custom address for replies can be um, testing fourth, fourth gen. And at northgeneducation.com and that's kind of what my thing is going to look like so we can actually do that as custom address and that means we're going to repost replies back to our email box which is really handy to be able to do this right that this gives me some kind of continuity and that way I don't have to dig through a bunch of stuff in the conversation mode I definitely want on and then when we're done here we just save the changes and that kind of sets up that delegated box now for my help desk, right, I do this a little bit differently and I've got members and other stuff. We'll walk through how that goes. But for the group settings, what I did is I labels collaborative inbox and all the rest of it. But I put who, who can post is anyone on the web. So right now you're sitting there and you're taking a look at this. Oh, wow, I can spam his email box. And that is very true for the help desk side of it. You absolutely could. But again, we're dealing with help desks. We're dealing with customers. We're dealing with clients. We're dealing with people on the outside of the world. And we want them to be able to email my sales team. We want them to be able to get help from what we've got going. The thing that I also changed too is that um, for moder moderation, who can manage members and custom roles. We're pretty good here for member moderation. But the other thing I did too was on conversation history. We're keeping that on. Who can reply privately? Who can moderate content? our group address, message moderation. I've got no moderation on, but because this is from outside and I don't really want a whole bunch of stuff, we're just gonna moderate from non-members. And what that means is that anyone who is not a member of the company, you're gonna send me an email from the help desk and if it has you know the standard dirty word search, standard ransomware, standard whatever, that will be restricted. Right, and then we spam message handling because we're dealing with the outside world. Moderate and notify content moderators that you're getting a lot of spam on this group. That's to be expected. Anything you have facing the outside world, it's an email address that will show up. Everybody will be happy. I don't want them to know that I rejected their email because there's nothing worse than having a really ticked off customer. <laughs> it's like going, hey, um, why did you reject my email? That's generally a bad thing. So we'll save those changes. And then we can go back to my groups. So you can also then go here to do group settings as well. Um, add members. Um, you can go ahead and you, I, you can leave the group if you're a member of it, right? But help desk too, then we come in here, we can actually go ahead and send from outside world. Um, we can actually go ahead and assign to somebody. We can assign to someone in the team. Um, we can remove the assignment if we had one. We can mark it as complete. We can go ahead and mark it as a duplicate because sometimes people get a little bit crazy and we'll send you a million messages, right? Um, and then we can go ahead and no action needed because if it's just stuff, it's just stuff, right? If someone's just venting, then they're just venting. And you can actually dig through and take a look at those that are approved, anything that's pending. Um, you can go and check a look at the labels that people have set up for this. Um, you can check the members, see who all is a member of this. And we have our people here, um, pending members, anyone that we banned. So banning is a little bit more interesting, right? Who do you want to ban? And you can actually ban public. So if you have someone that's being really super abusive or just super sending spam and it's getting through the spam filters or whatever, you can literally ban people and go from there. And that works pretty generically because you're just going to do it by email address um, and you can do it for internal or external.
I really like the ban people feature, especially for public email addresses, especially if they're getting to be like super abusive about stuff. Um, that just becomes fodder. You're going to want to put that in your vault and keep that for a while. Again, you do have group settings, you're a member, and then you can kind of do an about page on this thing if you want um, and get, get a digest of all the things that ended up happening. But that's it. That's all you get. You don't really have it tied to your Gmail. You just kind of have it as a separate tab that's open. And then they kind of tell you if it's an external group. right? So we do have an external group for this if you want to check it all out. Um, all hands, right? So we send emails to everybody in the company. will show up here. Our help desk, um, we do have Jira users, sales, uh, senior leadership group for the C-suite, and then just the testing one that we did. So when we're done with testing and we really don't want it anymore, right? We can go ahead and go to group settings, and then we can go screaming all the way down to delete group. And then we go delete it. It's permanent. Are you sure you want to delete it? That's why you kind of want to leave deleting as part of um, process. Now it will show up for a while until it's done. It will show up here. There are no more controls. And again, it's now will feed through the system and go through what it needs to do. So that's kind of it. Um, so sales, if we wanted to go here, we have our internal testing going on with here um, for that process. So again, it's just how you set this whole thing up. It does kind of give you that email address that you can go ahead and play around with. And you can actually copy a link address, save link as, copy the highlight. But that's essentially it. The interesting part about that is remember when you're doing this as a team group folder is that it will really go ahead and change things around so your public one is like Google Groups, right? Um, fourth Gen Public, where all hands is actually tied to the domain that we're working with. So kind of neat, all hands help fourth gen. And again, notice that if it's a really common name that it adds fourth gen on it, um, for so like senior leadership isn't really common. So just interesting on how it will add that prefix, fourth gen, yay or nay, onto that. Whether you want that or not, it's up to you. All right, so that is how you do groups. That is how you do what they will call a shared box. And that's really it. It doesn't tie the email. It's actually a separate tab. I would really love it if there was like a tab inside of the email so I could just go ahead and open up my group folders at the same time and keep track of everything in one tab. But that's me. And this is how you do it in the system. This is how you do it inside of Google Workspaces and set up that collaborative shared inbox. Just make sure that when you're doing this, right, that you have the big one is that um, collaborative inbox. That's the big one is making sure that you've got that there so people can email it from outside and be pretty much so good to go. Okay, that's it for this lecture. I will see you in the next one.